Welcome to the Deep Dive. If you've been tracking the 2025-2026 Northern Hemisphere winter forecast, it's uh, it's probably time to shred your notes. Yeah, you really do. The entire scenario has completely flipped. I mean, just two months ago, September, October, the conventional wisdom was all pointing towards a mild winter. Was anchored by background warming and, you know, developing La Nina. That forecast is now history. It really is a staggering revision. Around mid-November, we saw what we call a... Uh, major shift a major shift the atmosphere transitioned and violently from a pretty predictable ocean driven pattern to something well something highly volatile atmosphere driven so we went from mostly mild to great to a high probability outlook for severe cold and significant snowfall starting right in december okay so our mission today is to unpack the i guess strange high magnitude drivers that just completely overruled everything we expected right let's uh let's start with what failed the ocean baseline it absolutely failed. The initial forecast relied so heavily on La Nina and the event just, it didn't strengthen. It stayed really weak. And it's fading now. It is. It's projected to fade pretty rapidly to ENSO neutral conditions, which we uh, sometimes call La Nada. La Nada. Oh, wow. So what does that actually mean for you, the listener? Well, the critical thing to understand is that La Nada lacks the energy of a strong event. It can't enforce those stable, warm patterns like that defensive southeast ridge. So it's like the, the barrier is down. Exactly. It's a porous barrier. It just opens a wide corridor for Arctic outbreaks to pour deep into the continent. And that's where the stratosphere takes control. I mean, this is the main event, isn't yes, it? This is the main event. A sudden stratospheric warming, or SSW, forecast for late November. That timing is just, it's, it's incredibly rare. It is. These things typically happen much later. January, February. So we have to look back at analogs like what, 1958, 1968? Yeah, both of those had very early SSWs and both were followed by massive winter weather anomalies. So what does the SSW actually do? It disrupts the stratospheric polar vortex. Think of it as this massive river of cold air spinning over the pole way up high. The SSW hits it, and the modeling right now strongly suggests a split. A split, so it fractures. It fractures into two distinct lobes. One likely parks itself over North America and the other over Eurasia. Okay, wait, so I get SSW is the trigger. Yeah. But how does an event happening, what, 100,000 feet up, guarantee deep cold down here at the surface? I mean, what's the connection? It's the energy transfer, the vortex collapses, and that forces high pressure blocks to build underneath it, which then pushes all that frigid air down. I see. And what gives forecasters so much confidence this time is a reinforcement mechanism the quasi-biennial oscillation, or QBO. Right, the QBO. It's in an easterly phase right now, and that provides what we call constructive interference. It just dramatically amplifies the SSW's impact. So it makes sure the vortex disruption is sustained. It's not just a quick blip. Exactly. And the lag is crucial here. The SSW is late November, but the deep cold that onsets in early to mid-December. That's right. Which means the winter is gonna be incredibly front-loaded. December and January, they have the highest probability for extreme weather. Let's focus on those impacts. That split in the vortex, mm. that means trouble for both continents. Mm -hmm. For the central and eastern U.S., the forecast calls for um, pockets of wild. Pockets of wild. Right. So an increased potential for nor'easters. Strong winds and severe lake effect snow. Remember, the Great Lakes are still relatively warm, so when that Arctic air hits... You get explosive snow. And the South isn't safe either. No, the Deep South faces a risk of what could be, you know, historic freeze events. And if we take that same mechanism over to Europe, that SPV split, that's the beast from the East pattern, isn't it? It significantly increases the risk, yeah. You get frigid continental air pulled right into Northern Europe and the UK. And operationally, I have to assume this strains energy grids. Severely. Models are already showing a major spike in heating degree days for early December. That's the metric energy companies watch. So wrapping this up, what does this all mean? It means this winter is going to be defined by sharp high amplitude events, by that vortex breakdown. It's not gonna be a smooth, predictable climate signal. The atmosphere has, well, it's gone rogue. And as you think about how to prepare, maybe consider those analog years, 1958 and 1968. Mm -hmm. An early SSW often creates this sort of seesaw pattern. Mm -hmm. So if December is as severely cold as it looks, does that mean we should prepare for a mild recovery in January? Mm. Or will that instability just shift the deep cold somewhere else? That's something for you to mull over as we head into the thick of it.